lovely viewers of 100% Ginger, and today we're going to discuss the most anticipated topic on this channel yet, Kick-Ass the Movie. Now, much to my fondness of the comics, I also have a soft spot for the movie, mainly because of two main things, Nicolas Cage and Aaron Taylor Johnson. I think they did a phenomenal job, and I'm going to delve into more of that territory in a minute, but one thing to get out of the way is, before I start the video, is that I won't have another video uploaded for a while, and don't be worried, don't be, don't panic, it's going to be something interesting, and it's going to be about a video game, yes, I'm going to discuss the first video game on the channel yet, in like a week or so, and... It's not over Pathologic 2, it's not over... I did, I did, I did talk about it in one video in particular, but just wait for that, guys. You're in for a treat. Now, that news out of the way, sorry for digressing, but I want to get that out of the way. Let's discuss the movie as a whole. So, here's the first movie. And I only own the first movie, I didn't really enjoy the second one. If you want me to make a video on that, also let me know. That one's gonna be very dreadful, though. I despise that movie. It's it's just it's just putrid. It's a putrid mess, is how I describe the second one. But I still think this movie, especially with the director, it, it, there's lots of fan love and service in it, and it really combines the emotional aspect in the books as well as the comedic value like the comedy it really does intertwine very well and it's actually a very loyal movie which is my first pro is it's very loyal to the overall comics now every character is very similar except there are some key differences that kind of benefit the movie like for example Nicolas Cage's outfit as Big Daddy, it changes into a more Batman approach. His suit looks more like a Batman ripoff, a poser, and it looks really cool. And he has like a fake mustache, and I just love it. It's really funny and amusing, but he also is very mental in that suit. He's very intimidating, especially in the warehouse scene. That's my favorite scene in the movie. It has the 28 Days Later score by John Murphy in it, and it's just absolutely beautiful. That scene is one of the best superhero scenes I've ever seen in a movie in the past, like, 20 years. And I'm trying to think of other things that are notable before I get to any particular cons is I think they casted everyone really cool well. Like I said, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Even though he's really buff for the character, like, I don't know why he's just nerdy sophomore person who is, like, his physique looks as if he's a 25-year-old. And they did, they did audition people who are much older than an actual teenager, but I think they still did a good job. It wasn't as bad as Spider-Man, the first one with Tobey Maguire, where you can clearly tell and distinguish the fact that they're not teenagers. They're 29-year-olds playing teenagers, but in this movie you can kind of tell they're teenagers, especially with Hit Girl. She's like 12 in this movie. I think they did a great job casting her. And I think McLovin, who was 18 or 19 when this was casted, he did a great, outstanding job, too. Like, everyone really felt not out of place at all whatsoever. And they really felt like they were authentic when it came to the portrayal of the characters. But damn, is he buff. Wow. Sheesh. But, uh, what is that? Is that an Audi? That's disgusting. We don't like Audis here. And I think... One more pro is I can clearly tell, like I said before, the director really had a passion for this, for this, for this work. He really put all of his love into it, which I can't say the same for the second one, but for, we're not discussing the second one. But the first one almost bewildered me due to how much fan love there was in the movie. I watched the movie before the comics when I was like seven or eight, which is kind of unhealthy, but considering how violent the movie is, but it's still really good. I think it really combined the bittersweet nature that the uh, the books had with, like I said before countless times, the humor with the emotional parts. And, it, and the plot twist is still cool. It has the plot twist from the first book, and it does it just as well. It, it's, it They execute it just as well. And I think... I think the villain, especially, I don't think he's named Genovese in this, but he's still really good. 
He's also in The Kingsman, and this director would go on to make The Kingsman, I think, as well. And The Kingsman was also written by the same person who wrote Kick-Ass, and that's really cool, too. If you want me to cover those movies, let me know down in the comments. Now, final verdict, as well as any cons. I think the only con I can think of is that it's connected to the second movie. That's the only con I can think of. And there are some out-of-place areas in the movie for, for Dave. Like, for example, in the end, I'm not going to spoil anything, but let's just say he does kill some people in this movie, which isn't really on par with the character in the book. Because in the book, he doesn't kill anyone, really, in the first one. He's, he's kind of shy and just not confident in himself. But in this movie, he, he kind of develops that quickly. There's quick character development, which is fine. It's not a big gripe, and I'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking. She's very loud all the time. But... That's the only con I can think of for a couple, and the final verdict that I give this movie is like an 8 to a 9 out of 10. I know lots of people give this movie like a 7, but I think this is one of the most loyal book movie adaptations I've ever seen on cinema. It's really good. And if you've never seen it, I highly recommend it. It's one of Nicolas Cage's best movies when it comes to the early 2010s. And Nicolas Cage, he's actually made really good movies recently like Pig. And the unbearable way of massive talent. If you want me to discuss those as well, let me, let me know. I really love those movies, and I'm a fan of Nicolas Cage, but he did a great, outstanding job here, too. He's probably the highlight of this movie, even though he's not in it for that long, but still good. And that's all I can have to say about this movie. I'm very positive with this movie. I'm not probably not going to review the second one because I'm just so. I hate that movie so much. I despise it. I don't really recognize that it's even exists. They should do a reboot, honestly. Aaron Taylor Johnson's only 30. He could still do it. They should just reboot the second one with the same director. That's the main mistake they made is they did not have the same director. And that was fatal to the production of the movie. But yeah, that's all I have to say in remarks of, I guess, some of Kick-Ass 2 as well, but mainly Kick-Ass 1. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a very fantastic, lovely day.